thank you uh, to the gentleman for your questions. Um, I will now recognize myself for five minutes of questions. Uh, Mr. Secretary, first, thank you for being with us today. Um, and uh, I will just uh, remind my colleagues on the other side who have been uh, asking for this country to open up um, because there's no longer a health crisis, according to them, um, that uh, we will uh, continue to encourage the administration to look at Title 42 now that the country is reopening again. I wanna thank you, Mr. Secretary, for all the work you have done at the border um, and for allowing me to visit the border with you to see the remarkable progress we've seen in having children um, out of border patrol custody as quickly as possible under your work and the work of this administration it has been remarkable to see uh, the hours go down significantly, um, less than 72 hours, in, in many cases, 24 hours. So I wanna thank you for that. Uh, we also heard from uh, colleagues uh, across the aisle about help on the border. And I'm, I'm sure that you're aware of this, uh, but happy to report to my colleagues that help is on the way. Um, I had the honor of um, going down to uh, Flexi in Charleston uh, to provide remarks at a graduation ceremony there for the second class of the Border Patrol Processing Coordinator, uh, which uh, is a position that was created to provide that additional assistance for Border Patrol agents. So they had that extra help to process migrants to make sure that uh, we are uh, getting them a, a better care uh, for children and for families and to allow more agents to remain in the field. So I wanted to uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary, for that. Um, Mr. Secretary, as you know, the Department of Homeland Security is the largest federal law enforcement agency in the country with more than 60,000 law enforcement officers among its workforce. Additionally, tens of thousands of state, local, and tribal law enforcement officers receive training from one of DHS's components, the Federal Law Enforcement Training Centers. As I mentioned, I was fortunate to visit the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center in Charleston earlier this week. This visit reinforced my belief that DHS has the opportunity to be a leader in law enforcement training by prioritizing de-escalation tactics and oversight mechanisms in its standards regarding use of force and ensuring compliance throughout the department. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas, what efforts is DHS making to ensure that the department's law enforcement components are prioritizing de-escalation and utilizing proper force, uh, proper use of force tactics? Congresswoman, uh, uh, thank you for your, um, uh, your preliminary remarks. Uh, we are every day looking at the training uh, that uh, we provide uh, to our law enforcement personnel and um, um, ensuring uh, that it comports with best practices uh, as they emerge. And uh, we are very focused on ensuring uh, that FLETSI implements those best practices in its training protocols, not only uh, because FLETSI imparts expertise, knowledge, and education uh, to federal law enforcement, but also has an important role with respect to state and local law enforcement. And I would be pleased to provide the particulars to you. Well, thank you. And you kind of read my my next question was, um, you know, what what are uh, Flexi and the department doing to convey uh, these best practices to state, local, and tribal law enforcement agencies? Uh, we we um, work uh, in close partnership. Uh, with state, local, tribal, territorial uh, law enforcement. Uh, I was just uh, in California last week uh, and met uh, with chiefs of police, uh, uh, sheriffs, uh, highway patrol, and spoke about these very issues. We take a very collaborative uh, uh, and communicative approach uh, with our partners in this regard. Great. Well, thank you for that. Um, I was impressed to see uh, the um, efficiency of having this law enforcement training center there and so many agencies, I believe over 100, uh, using it and collaborating and working together. I'm also pleased uh, that the chairman of our committee has taken action on this issue by developing language in the DHS reform bill that enhances and expands de-escalation training at the department and prohibits the use of chokeholds, among other reforms. Uh, Mr. Te Secretary, will you commit to working with the committee on enacting and implementing these reforms? I look forward to doing so, Congresswoman. Well, fantastic. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Secretary. I see that my colleague, uh, Mr. Torres of New York has joined us. 
I will now recognize the gentleman from New York, Mr. Torres, for five minutes.